I said, my hammer's my foot. This is pain to shove back in there, too. So, and that was basically what some of the stuff we would have carried in the small. Um, and this actually goes over your shoulder, and these clips here clip in here, so the whole thing's one unit when you're wearing it. So, the British soldiers, one thing we all carry. We all had a cup. You always had this on the outside. You know, when you had to stop getting a drink. Especially if it was uh, some good French wine. This with the coop, the bandolier, the webbing, the helmet. This probably would have been in my pack or something. So because you would wear this, you weren't gonna wear that helmet. So you wear your, your tam and this is gonna go this is known as a tam machine. Scottish. And not to be confused with what the Airborne guys are wearing over there, those are berets. They're not high. You didn't know the one guy's wearing the kilt, he could be, but that's a regular, the airborne was regular British army. They were. So, sure, didn't mean to rattle off there. Now yeah, we're kind of here for the rambling on. Ah. So you're British uh, infantry? Yeah, we're just a British infantry unit. There's more than us. There's there's probably about eight or ten guys in our group. We had there was three of us yesterday, and the one guy left. Uh, he was he only came up for the day. My I have a son. My one son does it. He he's not here. Uh, it's a couple. We have a, we have three guys that come from Connecticut. Like we were when they did the thing at D-Day at Conneaut, they were here for that, and then. Uh, like, I'm from Canton, Scotch from Dover, uh, a couple guys down from the Cincinnati area, a couple guys out, actually out in like Iowa, Illinois, so we're kind of spread out everywhere. Yeah. So did each of you carry half of that tent or how did that... No, no, these, these are bivy tents, unlike the Americans who carry the halves, these things would have been thrown on a truck or something. Uh, Trucks are nice. Yeah. You know, British we'll blanket, soldier, I mean, I assume. soldiers in any army, I mean, if you were going to, if you, if you, unless you were going to be somewhere for a length of time, you weren't really under canvas. You know, guys okay. slept where they could and how they could. You know, guys like of us, I, I'll pull it out here in a minute, there was a canvas half. Uh, British soldiers also had these, and they were able to hook them together. But see, it's more length than it is. So, and then you could put that on the ground and lay them. A lot of times, the guys would use those and take their raincoats and put them on. But that's bothering stuff right there. But a sleeping bag. The sleeping bag is. So that's where you slept the last couple yeah, nights. Yeah, two nights. I was in that tent. You'd be amazed the amount of stuff I have in that tent. In my, all my gear, clothing. Insulation. You know. Yeah. Oh, uh, Friday, it got so cold Friday night, I uh, I started pulling stuff on top of me. I had all these extra blankets. Next thing I know, I wake up and I'm actually my kit and everything's laying on top of me, my gun. So. Hey, if it works. Yeah, I asked. Last night, by the time I got warm, I had like three blankets on me, wool blankets. I ended up putting, I got this, I got a blue, like, flannel shirt, long john, a green long john chain underneath my uh, air tech shirt here. And this is a shirt that was issued in the desert for the forces in the desert and in the Italian campaign. Uh, it was actually pretty cool. It has openings in the armpit. So, we, uh, I 
That's called a bell tent. A bell. Bell tent. There are four, like ten guys sleep in it. My little home away from home is right there, and that's called a bivy. Uh. And not my other guy, yeah. <laughs> and actually, the cake can the the put two British soldiers in the, the bivy tent. So. I like that. That's good. Oh, that's the. Uh, this right here? Yeah, what is that? That, that is a uh, oh, Holland okay. camera shanter. Uh, I thought that was with it. I go, what's with No, that's, that's my, that's my, uh... Camouflage. Yeah, that's my, uh, <laughs> brogy helmet, my British brogy helmet. <laughs> and that on there is called Strip. And it was basically the break up the front of the helmet. So the distance, if I'm laying down, once you fight on that field, it made a pure, yeah. you know, vegetation. Well, careful with that thing, but I say, don't sit on that. That thing's probably going to break. <laughs> and that's, my, that's a Scottish like camo that. chanter. And that's our regiment dress, Gordon Highlanders. That's our low, below the Highlanders. And that's part of the, uh, a little piece of the Highland, the Gordon Park, the flag. Hey, it's everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's our regiment dress. 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 Actually has a poem written about the Tamo Shanter, and it's called the Ode to the Tamo Shanter. Now this is an actual. This would be a natural issue blanket, uh, and the reason why it would be a government blanket for one simple reason: it has the crown crest, GR, that the for George Rex. So if I was to destroy it or do something terrible to it, I could be in trouble for that. Because I was destroying uh, King's Cup. And it's a wool blanket. The nice thing about this is it's not itchy like you normally would be. Yeah, that's what you As opposed to, this is actually a Belgian oh, army so blanket. That, yeah, you see, that was not bad. Well, Smart British soldier, you take your rain ponds out, lay on top of this, and then you really And that's our small path. Uh, yep. So. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, it's really nice. These were World War II gym shoes. World War II British gym shoes. Yeah, 